All right. Good evening. Good evening, everyone. And um, I'm going to talk to you briefly about the ESSO Exploration and Production Guyana Limited LISA Phase 1. And what we're going to do is look at the environmental impact assessment and what ESSO is going to do. Um, well, the project is 1.4 billion recoverable barrels of oil, and that's our oil. Chris mentioned earlier that the oil belongs to the state. Well, the state is us. And where is it? If you look at that diagram, you can see it's an awful long way down. There's the sea level, and you've got to go about five or 6,000 feet down to the seabed, and when you hit the seabed, you've got to go about another um, almost 12,000 feet to get to this deposit of oil. So we're talking about going down 2.2 miles under the seabed or 3.3 miles below sea level. And um, ESSO is going to put down 17 deep water wells. Now there's a US government report which says drilling in deep water brings new risks not yet completely addressed by the reviews of where it is safe to drill. What could go wrong and how to respond if something does go awry? The drilling rigs themselves bristle with potentially dangerous material, machinery. The deep water environment is cold, dark, distant, and under high pressures. And the oil and gas reservoirs, when found, exist at even higher pressures, thousands of pounds per square inch, compounding the risks if a well goes out of control. ESSO apparently does not agree, because that's their, um, their view of the project that they're going to do with seven deep water wells. It will have minor impacts on physical resources, such as the air quality, the marine sediments, the water quality, no impact on biological resources, minor impacts on marine bio biological resources, and largely positive impacts on socioeconomics, which is not part of our EIA, and the Environmental Protection Agency should just have put a line through that bit on socioeconomics. Let's look at some of what ESSO is going to do. So the project will have minimal or no impacts on the environment. Uh, there will be 4,000 barrels of sewage going into the marine environment every single day. A barrel of oil is 42 gallons, and it's because of Richard III who decided that that would be a good measure for wine. And Cooper's made barrels that size, and we've kept on making barrels that size ever since. 168,000 gallons of sewage every day. Approximately 1.4 billion over the life of the project. I'm saying approximately because we don't know for sure whether well, it's 20 years, 23 years, or more. Um, 1.1 billion, 1.1 million barrels of ballast water. Now, um, every time the tanker comes in, it's going to jettison the ballast and it's going to take on the oil. How much ballast will there be in Guyana's water? I don't know. There's 1.4 barrels of oil to shift, but the environmental assessment doesn't say how much ballast. All it says is that there will be no potential contaminants, negligible impact. Well, the International Maritime Organization doesn't quite hold that view. They say ballast poses serious ecological, economic, and health problems due to the multitude of marine species carried in ship's ballast water, because you're sucking up ballast here, it's sucking up the water, bacteria, microbes, small invertebrates, eggs, cysts, and larvae of various species. And they say, Introducing harmful aquatic organisms and pathogens to new environments is one of the four greatest threats to the oceans. Now, in addition to this, um, there will be a lot of other things that are going to be discharged into Guyana's water. There's something called produced water, which comes up the well with the oil and the gas, and that will have what ESSO calls indirect toxicity impact. Such a lovely phrase. I think what that means is it's going to unbalance the ecosystem. They're also going to put every single day 700,000 barrels of hot water. So take the seawater up, cool the machinery, the compression systems, the utility systems, and so on, and then put it back into the sea. We don't know how hot that's going to be when it goes back in, because they don't say. What they do say is that 100 meters away from the discharge point, the temperature will be less than three, it will go up by less than three degrees centigrade. So that's all right then. 
And if you look at table 712, you will see a list of other things that will be um, put into our water. Now, hazardous waste. This project will produce some hazardous waste. Some of it will be buried and some of it will be burned. And it will continue to produce hazardous waste throughout the life of the project. Emissions. Mr. Gosaran gave us an excellent overview of carbon emissions. Uh, we are estimating about 22,030 kilotons from this project. Sorry. The environmental impact assessment says that there will be a negligible cumulative impact. Obviously, they haven't read the press because it says that global atmospheric CO2 levels now hitting record high. This moves Guyana, or will move Guyana, from being a carbon sink, which is what we are at the moment, to a carbon emitter, and it completely obliterates the green development strategy. So we don't need to waste people's time about that anymore. It will also contribute to rising sea levels. Now that's not a smart thing to do when your capital city is below sea level, and my house is below sea level. Now, one of the striking features of this environmental impact assessment is that it is what I would call data deficient. Here are some of the survey results. In addition to that, other notable fish species observed included a large number of unidentified tuna species. M marine mammals were acoustically detected on 264 occasions. 254 of those were unidentified delphinoids, dolphins to you and me. 59 avian species, 10 were unidentifiable. 31 fish species, 7 were unidentifiable. When they put a table of 23 whales observed, they could identify 10. 27 dolphins observed, they could only identify 14. Out of 6 marine turtles, they could identify 3. They should have had Annette with them. There's a bird checklist that is 10 years old and covers the whole of Guyana, but it is not a bird survey. In fact, there's no proper survey of the seabirds. The fish list is from 1962, 55 years old, which makes it older than some of the people in this room. Nevertheless, environmental, management resource, environmental resources management, ERM, say that they did not encounter any difficulties in preparing the EIA, and that the information was adequate for ERM to prepare a robust impact assessment. Well, you probably guessed it. They did not comply with the Environmental Impact Assessment, Environmental Impact, Environmental Protection Act. Section 10 says you must have an Environmental Impact Assessment for any project that may, have, may significantly affect the environment. That means any interference with the ecosystem, and any other activity in the natural surroundings, any project in the schedule, and so on. Clearly, this oil venture um, is made up of different projects that may affect the environment. Every single one of them requires an environmental impact assessment. You need an environmental impact assessment for each one of the eight production wells, each of the six deep water wells each of the three gas wells, the sewage, the ballast, the produced water, the cooling water, the transportation of the oil, and so on. Even the seismic studies should have an environmental impact assessment because of the impact on marine mammals. Section 11 says you must identify, describe, and evaluate the, different, the direct and indirect effects of the proposed project on the environment, the human beings, flora, fauna, soil, water, air, climate, the whole long list of things. And you must give a reasonable assessment of the harm that could occur. Now, the largest spill scenario in this um, environmental impact assessment is of 20,000 barrels a day for 30 days coming from loss of control of a deep water well. And the EIA says that this is an unlikely event, but there will be little irreversible damage, although it could take a decade or so to clear up. So the total spill would be 600,000 barrels of oil. Well, you all know that in 1989, the Exxon Valdez spilled 257,000 barrels of oil, so roughly half what we're talking about at the moment. That spill covered 11,000 square miles. 
It killed hundreds of thousands of birds and, and animals and unknown quantities of salmon and heron. And herring, and nearly 30 years later, the area has not recovered and probably never will. This environmental impact assessment is a totally inadequate assessment of the risk. Deep water drilling carries very significant risks. Well, this is what um, ESSO will do. Their well controlled philosophy is focused on blowout prevention, safety and risk management systems, change procedures, global standards, trained personnel, mature programs, environmental protection, well equipment, testing, and so on and so forth. Prevention does not necessarily work. This is what ESSO says. In the unlikely event of a well blowout, dispersant is injected subsea at the well location on the seafloor using specialized equipment and remote, op remotely operated vehicles. The EIA does also say that there is a draft national contingency plan prepared by the International Maritime Organization which identifies the Guyana Coast Guard as a lead agency for oil spill operations, but the draft is yet to be formally adopted. So it appears from this that if there is a well blowout, you SA will spray some dispersant and call the Coast Guard. This is what Bibi had to do after the Macondo well blew. It took them 87 days to cap the well. That's why there were 4.9 million barrels of oil. And at its peak, they had 45,000 people and thousands of watercraft trying to deal with it. And yet, the American government report concluded, it is impossible to argue that the industry or the country, we're talking about the United States of America, the biggest economy on the planet, was prepared for a disaster of the magnitude of the Deepwater Horizon spill. 20 years after the Exxon Valdez spill in Alaska, the same blunt response technologies, booms, dispersants, and skimmers were used to limited effect. And that's the problem. Complex systems almost always fail in complex ways. Are we prepared? I'm going to remind you of the Constitution. We have an obligation to maintain Guyana's ecosystems and biodiversity now and for future generations. Now, in conclusion, I'm not saying that ESSO must not take our oil from beneath our seabed. What I'm saying is that we cannot make a valid decision based on this environmental impact assessment. It is wholly inadequate. ESSO has not complied with the requirements of the Environmental Protection Act, and the EPA has not done its job of applying the Environmental Protection Act. Now, if you're not going to follow the law, this is a very bad indicator for the future. So I would suggest that the permit is revoked and the process should be started again. Thank you very much.